Hey guys, it's Wyatt. Today we're back in the garage working on the C10 race truck build. We've got a ton I want to get done this weekend, so we're just going to hop right into things. Up first, we're actually going to be working on the front suspension of the truck. A couple of episodes ago, you guys probably saw we were cutting a bunch of metal out of the front suspension here, and most of that was to give room to our coilovers that are going to be going in here. More on those later, but in doing so, we actually lost our factory bump stop kit. Not kit, I don't know why I said kit, but our factory bump stops. So today we're gonna be building some new ones. That way in case one of the coilovers or one of the brackets fails and there's nothing supporting the weight of the truck, it'll have something to run into instead of just letting the frame smack on the ground, potentially hurting even more stuff. So what we're gonna be doing for those is actually using this inch and a quarter tubing. This is just some leftover stuff from all the cage tubing but it'll work perfect for what we're doing. So with this tubing and a couple of bolts and nuts, we're gonna be able to build our new bump stop kit. The idea here is really simple. This tubing is gonna get notched to contour the frame very well. It's gonna get welded on there. Then we're gonna take our nut, weld it to the end of here, and run a bolt and a jam nut into that, giving us an adjustable bump stop. It's really hard to show you guys it on the frame because I've only got one hand to hold everything and it's kind of tucked away in there. So we're just gonna go ahead, get this guy knocked out real quick and then I'll explain it when it's all done. So let's go ahead, jump into time-lapse and get these knocked out. And just like that, you condense six hours worth of work into a two minute time lapse. Anyways, the coilover mounts and the new bump stops are done and they are looking freaking awesome. It's a whole lot easier to just show you guys the final product than trying to film with one hand and hold parts in place with the other. So this is the final product here. If you guys didn't know, these trucks came factory with a torsion bar style front suspension. So essentially it's just a big rod that would run backwards on the frame and go to a key. And that keyway would allow you to kind of raise or lower the front of the truck by adding more tension onto that bar. Uh, it's a great design for what it is. But for drag racing, it's definitely not what we want. It doesn't really allow you a whole lot of adjustability and it's very heavy and cumbersome. I mean, the thing took up quite a bit of room back there that went to a big cross member and everything. So that is all gone now. We went to a full coilover setup on the front of this truck. The coils we're gonna be using are some double adjustable QA1s. These are not the exact ones. These are actually for the rear of the truck, but I use them for mock-up and the new shocks are actually on the way. With that being said, the mounts turned out really good. Hopefully they hold up. Uh, I keep contemplating with myself whether they're just gonna rip off the frame or work perfect. So I guess the time will come and we will figure that out firsthand. I did base these off of another truck. Uh, if you guys are familiar in the diesel world, there is another truck out there owned by Dirty Hooker Diesel. It's called Last Minute Hooker. And his coil over setup is pretty much identical to this. He seems to have really good luck with it. So I figured I'd give it a shot as well. I really liked how he did his and kind of just mirrored his setup. These upper mounts are made out of quarter inch plate and then for the lower mount we're actually utilizing the stock bracket for the factory shock. 
Um, should be pretty stout. If it does bend or break or whatever, we'll just have to build a stronger one. But most people do just run that stock bracket and have no problems with it. So we're gonna give that a shot. And then along with getting the coilover stuff done, we also got the new bump stops made. And these are nice because they're fully adjustable and they're pretty dang beefy. So worst case, if one of the coil mounts does break and this side comes crashing down, it will absorb all that weight right onto the bump stop. They are fully adjustable too. So if you wanted to raise or lower them, you can still do that. So with everything done up front, we need to turn our attention to the rear axle. There's a couple of things I need to finish welding. And then I also need to rebuild the rear wishbone mount. For those of you who don't know, this truck utilizes a wishbone for the rear suspension. This thing's sole purpose is to keep the rear axle centered underneath the chassis. Really simple in design. You've got two mounts up at the front. They both connect to the frame up there. And then you have one link that connects to the rear axle and it holds everything in place. Unfortunately, when I built this the first time, I wasn't really thinking it through. And on this rear heim joint, I actually mounted it this way on the rear axle. If you think about it, any force that will be applied to this and taken up in this link is actually going to be applied to the side of this heim joint like so. And unfortunately, heim joints in that position, taking that kind of load are not very strong. So what I need to do today is cut the old mount off and actually rotate this thing 90 degrees so that when you apply side load to it, the heim joint is gonna be a lot more effective in controlling that force. Woo wee, that son of a gun is heavy. That's about all I could do to get it up like that. Anyways, uh, here is the mount that we're gonna be cutting off. Sorry if it's a little dark. Uh, so yeah, you can see that the heim joint here is mounted vertically. We need to mount it horizontally. So I'm gonna have to cut off all this bracket. When I built this thing, I did build it really freaking stout and that's gonna be a real pain in the ass to get off there. So I'm gonna get the oxyacetylene out and torch off most of it and then just come back, clean it up with a grinder and then hopefully not dig into the tube too much as we have pretty minimal room there between it. So we'll get that done and then we'll probably add a couple of more gussets to this bar to help keep the rear axle centered. So we'll probably do a little mount from there to there and same on the top side, maybe even weld a little plate into the back housing here somewhere. But uh, we'll address that when we get there. Let's go ahead and get this mount knocked out. So I got the rear axle all cleaned up. The old tabs are no longer on there. And then I also got the new tabs built. So I have this mount kind of shimmed up right now with an old axle nut just to get the spacing right. I uh, will be putting some nicer spacers in there later that will allow the heim joint full movement. But for right now, this is just to get it lined up and tacked in place. So this guy is gonna go on the axle, something like that. And that will be our new wishbone rear link. So we're gonna go ahead and set the axle back down, get it put under the truck and get everything adjusted correctly. And then tack this guy in place to where it's pretty much neutral and has the most amount of movement up and down. That way with any travel in the suspension, we'll have plenty of room for this hind joint to actually articulate. So let's go ahead and get that knocked out real quick. But I tell you what, that axle is heavy as frick, dude. Trying to get it put up by myself was like all I could do to get it standed up to work on it and then setting it back down, that was a whole nother deal, trying to set it down without plowing the pinion into the ground. But we got it all done. I got it underneath the truck here. I got everything in place and got our new wishbone bracket tack welded onto the member there for the rear axle. So it is just tack welded, so I'm not gonna really lean into it, but you can see we can give this thing a wiggle and it's not going anywhere. It's keeping the axle nice and centered between the frame rails. Along with that, I also got the wheels and tires put on. I'm not sure I ever showed you guys these, but I went with some American Racing 16 by 10 inch wheels. Uh, I only went with these because supposedly they're about the lightest cheap wheel you can buy in an eight lug for these trucks. So that's what I went with. And then we have some M&H Cheater Slicks on here. These are their 30 by 14 on a 16 inch wheel. 
and we'll see how they do. Uh, it's pretty much the go-to tire for guys in this kind of racing. At some point later on, I would love to either swap this rear axle out for like a built nine inch, or perhaps maybe just modify this one to accept a five lug wheel and then go with some nicer wheels. You can get so many more options in a five lug versus an eight lug, especially when it comes to the lighter weight kind of race wheels. So that's all stuff we might consider in the future. I'd really love to actually just do a nine inch. Uh, that would really save a ton of weight from this truck. You'd probably lose, you know, a hundred pounds or something just on the axle itself but anyways that's beside the point another topic for another day uh, for right now i actually wanted to get the wheels and tires on it and get this thing back to a roller so that i could push it outside and take a look at it this truck has not seen the light of day since before it was painted so i'd really like to see what the paint looks like out in the sun uh, it is a complete roller right now so it's all holding its own weight there are no coils up front just yet i think i would mentioned it earlier we're waiting on the coils to come in for this and also springs so right now i just have it propped up on the bump stops and that was kind of the reasoning for getting those all done at this time anyways so yeah complete roller we're going to push it out the door and see what this thing looks like This might actually bottom out. I'm not quite sure yet, but it might up front here. Hopefully not though. Ooh, barely. All right, and stop. Shee! This thing is looking freaking fire, dude. I, I always, it kind of gives you the weirdest perspective looking at something inside of a small space forever and then you kind of get it out to where it's not so confined and it just looks completely different than what you've been used to. So it's pretty cool seeing this thing back out in the sunlight. Uh, like I said, it doesn't come out here often. Mainly I try to prevent rust uh, getting on this thing. It kind of got out of hand before we got it painted. So the least exposure to humidity I could get this thing was the end goal. But man, it's looking freaking awesome with it out here. I really need to get this rear axle painted and matching the rest of the frame. I'm really glad I went with this low gloss black color. I'm actually really liking it. And the wheels and everything kind of match it too. So this truck's gonna have a ton of like satin or low gloss black on it uh, mixed with the blue that I plan to paint the truck. But I think it should look pretty cool. If you guys have any other ideas, maybe leave them down in the comments below because I'm still not completely solid on the color scheme that I want to go with this thing. Uh, I'm thinking the blue, but if you guys have some cool ideas down below, I may consider actually going with a different color. But anyways, I'll quit yakking for a second and I'm just going to show you guys around the truck. So you guys saw the truck sitting outside. It's looking freaking awesome with some daylight hitting this thing. Uh, at the end of the time lapse there, I did throw in a little bit more welding and that was actually on the anti-roll bar. That guy is on the truck. I am done mocking it up. So now all I need to do is finish welding out uh, the end links for it and then the mounts on the axle. The anti-roll bar we went with is actually from TRZ. I don't know if you'll be able to see it there, but it is a TRZ anti-roll bar. A uh, huge shout out to Nick Eggers over at PTS Fab, a uh, good friend of mine, and I was talking to him about them a while back, and he actually recommended these ones, and that's what we went with. It's a pretty nice kit, it's affordable, and it's gonna be super strong. And with any luck, it'll prevent us from doing a G-body shuffle when this thing leaves the line. I'm trying to get as many things put on this chassis and finished up as I can, and then hopefully get them in paint as soon as I can, because everything is freaking rusting away. This Florida humidity is just killing everything. All the parts that I have sitting around 
are starting to surface rust. So the faster I can get them on here and the faster I can paint them, the better off we're gonna be. So that's what we're working towards. Obviously, we still have a ton left to do before this truck is ready, but the end goal is to make a pass in it by the end of the year. I know that seems like a long ways away, but this is a really in-depth build, so it doesn't just happen overnight. Uh, as far as these videos go, I'm gonna try and start uploading more of just the little stuff that we do day to day in the garage working on this thing. You guys have been asking for it, so I figured the least I could do is film the little stuff and show you guys what we got going on. Anyways, that's all I got for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to leave it a like and a comment down below. I love hearing from you guys, and as always, we will see you in the next one. Peace.